during the lockdown for the pandemic, we had mass here in our tiny house chapel for like two months. We would pick flowers from out here for the chapel. It has been a great benefit to us to have this space. We had mass here in the morning, a daily mass, and uh, on Sundays we also did a Zoom mass with Zoom for our Marymount school community. We weren't able to have any masses from March 10th on, and uh, we were first told by the cardinal of this diocese, archdiocese, the Cariot, that we had to close our churches. Then, through the intervention of the Pope, the Pope asked that they be open for prayer in Rome. So we were open um, four hours a day. Through the help of uh, the Paulus Fathers, the media, and uh, the General Council Presidential Board, they did a Paulus.org Help Rome Fund right at the beginning because no money was coming in. Through the generosity of our parishioners, but also our alumni, and many, 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 many Paulist fathers themselves gave and supported us. And we are so appreciative because without that, I don't know how we would have survived. For all of us, and for, for me, my word, not being able to actually attend mass in a church was, was a, a penance. It really, really was Lent. It's small, compact, but it's, in some ways, I, that's actually, I think, been great because it's from our house to yours. So it's been a way to keep that connection very regularly with our community. None of our employees came in for 10 weeks. We, we, we wouldn't let them come in. Because of the, of the going on metro and, and buses, it just was too dangerous. It's been difficult not to be able to go to hospitals um, and to not be able to have the personal contact with people that, that, that we're trained for. That's so integral to being a priest. But it's also been rewarding because we have tried really hard to find other ways to connect with people, you know, through the live streaming masses and prayer services. And in some ways we've reached even more people. The reality is for the last four months, we've got about 10 times more people participating in mass online than they are in person. Parishioners, families watching, and it's been extended to the hundreds and hundreds of alumni throughout the world. The fathers were just fantastic all these weeks and months. We could go online and have, have our mass in the morning. There are a lot of people that are still very uncomfortable in coming to church. And so we told them, take your time. I think the church is learning something in this current situation with the coronavirus pandemic throughout the world. I think it is realizing that it has to think differently. It needs to do things differently if it's going to continue to reach people. We don't want to put people at risk and we don't want them to feel obligated to risk themselves. And for that reason, we've continued to live stream uh, daily masses. We're doing that with one iPad, basically. And, you know, Father Greg or I, a little bit, we're training the sacristans to help out a little bit. I feel it's worth the sacrifice to wear the mask to keep everyone safe. It's a personal inconvenience, but I feel um, it's the least we could do. I don't want to think of anybody being afraid to come to church because, I mean, we have the hand sanitizer all over the place. We are obliged to wear masks. Obviously, I took mine off to, to talk to everyone, but well, the precautions are there. I do hope, I should say, that once we're over this, 
that we can encourage people to come back to church because church for me is very much about the relationships of people. I think all of us just being uh, human beings have a great sense of, of hope and the desire that things go back to normal, that you can sit in a pew right next to your, your best friend. We need each other. We cannot operate in a vacuum. We cannot be isolated from one another, even if we have to stay at home or if we're homebound because of illness. We need to reach out to one another, be part of the great communion of the church.